Hello everyone. In my latest project, I made a 2 kilowatt variable frequency drive to control the speed of induction motors. I learned so much from this project, so I decided to create a few videos going over the major design topics, like hardware, software, and maybe a few others. In those videos, I'll take a deep dive into the design process itself. This video is going to be an overview on the project, so it'll cover why VFDs are needed, I'll talk about what I made exactly, and I'll show a few examples of the VFD in action. Let's get started. Electric motors are controlled depending on their type. DC brushed motors have commutators, so supplying the motor with DC is enough to generate a rotating magnetic field, and the higher the voltage, the faster the motor will spin. Brushless motors, including induction motors, don't have commutators, so to substitute the commutators, voltage is fed to the stator windings to create a rotating magnetic field to cause the rotor to rotate. There are specific current waveforms needed to rotate the rotor optimally, and these depend on the motor construction. For optimal efficiency, the current waveform generated should have the same form as the back EMF waveform. As I said earlier, to overcome the lack of commutators, we need to generate a rotating magnetic field to cause the rotor to spin. And the faster this magnetic field rotates, the faster the rotor will potentially spin. So how do we create that rotating magnetic field? That's where VFDs come in. VFDs control motor speed by outputting voltage commands at varying frequencies and amplitudes, and thus creating the needed current waveforms on the stator phases for the desired speed and torque. Let's quickly go over what it took to create this VFD. First, let's see a block diagram of what the VFD contains. This VFD is fed by one phase AC voltage, which is rectified to DC voltage using a full bridge rectifier and capacitors. Next, using this DC voltage, the controller commands the inverter to output PWM commands to generate the desired current waveforms in the phases. There are also a few peripherals, such as the push button, which lets the user choose between a one-phase and a three-phase motor, the potentiometer, which controls the speed and can also turn off the PWM commands, the LED display, which shows the chosen motor configuration and the speed, and finally, the rocker switch, which turns the AC power to the circuit on or off. Okay, now let's take a quick look at the hardware design. The PCB is divided into two parts, high voltage and low voltage. The low voltage side contains the microcontroller and the peripherals, like the potentiometer, the display, and so on. The microcontroller sends and receives signals from the high voltage side through these isolators. The high voltage side contains this rectifier and the intelligent power module, along with a few other components. I divided the schematics into a few blocks and I also wrote a few notes and calculations for myself. So we have the power block, which contains the power modules, rectifier, and the capacitor bypass relay. Here we have the intelligent power module block with all sorts of notes and calculations. This is the microcontroller block. The miscellaneous block contains the potentiometer, a button, and a few connectors. And finally, we have the isolator block. I ordered most of the parts from LCSC, and in total they cost me $55, including shipping. With a $20 penalty cost, because I ordered the wrong isolators, so I had to order them again. I ordered the PCB from JLC PCB, and it cost $40, including shipping. This project was not panning out to be a less expensive option than a commercial VFD, although many more improvements and cost reductions can be made. I'm not an electrical engineer, so I kind of learned as I went. All right, let's move on to the software. I used the Atmega 328 microcontroller, which is the same one on the Arduino Uno board. Here, I wrote some logic behind some of my calculations. I'll talk about these in the in-depth video. The main parts of the code are the interrupt, which handles the PWM commands, the register configuration, which is set depending on if the motor is one phase or three phase, and a few functions which handle the display, the button, 
and the potentiometer. The control method of this VFD is V over F, which maintains a constant relation between the outputted average voltage and the frequency up to the rated speed. After going over all of this, the VFD may seem a bit complicated. Are there any simpler options for induction motor speed control? I've heard of all sorts of speed controllers which use dimmers, thyristors, or triacs to cut the AC voltage to the motor, which claim that this will reduce the speed of the motor. If the motor has no load, then the speed won't change. Jeremy Fielding made a nice demonstration about this if you want to check it out. Under load, however, if we reduce the voltage, the torque will start to decrease since we have less current in the stator windings. If the load requires a higher torque than the motor is outputting, then the motor won't be able to keep up and the slip frequency will start to increase. This will in turn increase the torque and the system will potentially stabilize at a lower speed. However, a pretty big change in voltage is needed for a small change in speed, and there's a significant risk of stalling. So although this method is much easier to implement compared to a VFD, it is also much more limited. What spurred this project was the fact that my father-in-law wanted to control the speed of an induction motor on a drill press he has. There are a bunch of VFDs on the market, but they seemed relatively expensive to me, and I was also looking for an interesting project to work on. So I offered to build him a VFD. He probably forgot about the drill press by now, but the VFD is finally done. Now let's see it in action. This VFD's speed range is 20 to 120 Hz, which will translate to RPM using this equation. And it's rated to run continuously at up to 8 amps. Here I'm using a three-phase induction motor and rotating it at different speeds with no load. I'm turning on the VFD and waiting for the capacitor bypass relay to turn on. The red LED indicates the capacitors are charged. And I'm using the potentiometer to determine the speed. The display is showing the sine frequency I'm injecting. And that's it for this video. I'll go into much more detail in the following videos and also show the VFD running the motor with load and maybe even in the drill press. Make sure to subscribe if you want to check out those videos when they come out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.